Who's the radio operator of the spacefaring vessel, LB-01? We were given the mission of broadcasting the serialized gaming podcast, Safe Space, to as many people as we possibly could. If you can hear this message, then clearly it's been a success. If that's the case, then you should know that what you're about to listen to is a tabletop role-playing game where five people roll dice and tell a story of science fiction and survival horror using the Mothership game system by Tuesday Night Games. It was originally formatted for YouTube, but the records have been modified for an optimal audio experience. However, be warned, this is a survival horror podcast, and there may be descriptions of violence, gore, psychological terrors and mental trauma that some listeners may find disturbing. If you're still out there, then make sure you have your stim packs ready and whatever refreshments you may need. I'm starting the data recording playback now. This is Safe Space. So two, audio file name, The Silent Echo. Last time, we met the crew of the Susan O'Brien, a ragtag and unique crew of blue-collar workers on the edge of space. After a long 18-month stint of dismantling, recycling and salvage, the crew are preparing for the journey home when they get a call from HQ that another job needs doing, and as they're the closest ship, they drew the short straw. An executive class cruise liner is having communication problems during its first time out of the docks, and the O'Brien has been given the job of fixing it. On top of all that, there is a discontinued satellite relay station that is prime for extra scrap and salvage, and after a less than fortunate time out in space, it could just be what the crew need to get fully paid. So they prepared for an extra month in space, month or so. But these things took a turn when en route to the relay, the ship was almost hit by an unidentified chunk of space debris. There were some premature emergency manoeuvres that may have been a little overzealous, and a couple of the crew almost took a tumble through the corridors if it were not for quick thinking and some impressive upper body strength. They avoided disaster, but not unscathed, as Zam Brazel confirmed when he began repairs to the outside of the ship. An integral part of the ship's hyperdrive had been badly damaged, and without a replacement, so were the ship's chances of ever getting home. And that is where we pick up our session this week. <sighs> so, we open, we don't cut to, Zam is not on the outside of the ship, we open in the large cargo bay of the Susan O'Brien, um, which I kind of want to call it the Susan O'Brien every time I want to use her full name, <laughs> but I think they only need to... polite. Yes, it's only polite, God rest her soul. Um, but on the floor, in the cargo bay, on the floor of the cargo b- bay is some of what was left of the hyperdrive coils, um, which Zan brought in from the outside of the vessel. It's pretty much scrap now. Um, The crew um, stand in the bay, and unless any of you wish to be somewhere else in the ship, um, but, I mean, Zan is there, the captain is there, 
Are the rest of you all around, or where are you at this point in time after Zam comes in? No, I'm there. I'm there in case Sam's done himself a mischief. Yeah. I'll be there for maintenance reasons. Purposes. <laughs> Something might need maintaining. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the, so what? the entire what? it's maintenance. What? Yeah, it's yeah. Shut up. You can't uh, do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the warden will remember this. No, the uh, the crew stand in the bay, looking down at the sort of the mess Zan brought in, and for a long moment there's silence as everyone sort of takes in this scene. And uh, the captain, after a while, the captain just looks down and is like, "Well, I guess it's official." We're in a pretty bad spot. Are you okay, Zam? Yeah, I'm fine. Better than these coils. How are we looking out there? Is there anything else apart from the coils, or is this the worst of it? Yeah, this is the worst of it. There's some minor damage, but uh, I, ma- I patched that up. Well, um, I run some diagnostics with Darcy, and it seems like life support and everything that might have got us killed were... Are working fine, so uh, well done on your quick thinking, Dick. Any time, Captain. Mm. Um, it, we could have been a lot worse if it wasn't for your quick thinking. So, um, so without this, we're gonna have a hard time, nigh on impossible time, getting home. But. The good doctor here suggested that maybe um, this echelon vessel we're headed up to help out at some point may have the parts we need. Um, it's a big chunk of metal, so I'm hoping it it may have. But, Doc, I know you don't like to go out and about, but um, I'm afraid it might be a case about minding our P's and Q's and playing nice. So I think you might have to take the lead when we get to uh, this... Um, Icarus, I believe the, the vessel is called. Um, I believe you ran in those circles, my right, Doc? I would never say I was one for playing nice, but I've got some experience. Well, experience is all I need right now. Experience is what's going to get us out of this jam. Now, right now, obviously, Zam, if you make sure everything's working... Wendy, you continue make sure that everything on the inside is working ship shape. We got a job to do. And uh I don't we shouldn't lose our heads about this because that's the worst thing that could possibly happen. So let's just focus on the task at hand. I've seen people lose it over the littlest thing. But right now let's focus on the job. <sighs> Get this satellite relay scrapped up, chopped up, and put in cargo, and then move on to this vessel and see if we can see if that works. How's that sound? Captain, what was the satellite's designation again? Uh, I believe... Uh, Darcy, what was the name of that satellite relay? And the a monitor that's on a rail in the cargo bay. There's several small monitors in the cargo bay, which is quite useful. The satellite relay is named Echo 237, Captain. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Echo 237. Why? Is that important for any reason, Doc? Well, could be the whiskey haze, but uh, I'm pretty sure one of the pieces of metal that hit us had 237 on it. What? That that can't be right. We are a good few date. Are you absolutely sure, Doc? Never. <laughs> Ways reassuring from a medical professional. <laughs> well, what? Hmm. Well, I value your opinion, Doc, but if you're not utterly convinced, I think we just... We just stay on track, get to this thing, and what do you... That doesn't make any sense. If we could at least stay cautious. I think uh, that's wise words, Doc. Um, 
How's everyone doing? Zam, Zam, I know you're doing okay, but it's, it was quite a bump we took out there. Is everyone doing okay? Wendy, honey, how you doing? I'm good. Dick? Yeah. Well, tip top, Captain. Do you want me to drive the ship? Uh, no, uh, I'll take Stick for uh, for the next uh, the next round. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good idea, Captain. <laughs> I love that this is already building up. Cheese <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. and ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> or just blissfully ignorant of everything around it. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. So um yeah, let's do what we gotta do. Let's take it as it may. Um so let's get back to work. And you all get back to your roles. I mean I'm not sure what what you would immediately start doing. Obviously there is there is maintenance to make sure after a bump like that there is probably a good day of making sure that the ship is actually okay. Wendy uh, welding montage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With some yeah. How much of the satellite do we have on board now? You don't have any of the satellite. We what, don't. what you have is what's left of the hyperdrive sort of okay. coils. And Zam, you would know that they they weren't just sort of loose and hanging from the bottom of the ship. Yeah. It took off a casing mm. and sort of completely sort of destroyed it. So the whole, you know, the, that's something that you would need to. Yeah. Probably if you don't have a new casing, if, if you can't get hold of a new one at some point, that is something you may have to manufacture. There's a lot of scrap and there's a lot of yeah. salvage. You I know. figure, yeah, <clears throat> he's yeah. going to start jury rigging something out of the, yeah. uh, the scrap. Oh, well, if that's the case, we, let's have our first roll of the evening. Yay. Okay, it would you... my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you like to give me? I would say, give me an intellect roll. But, yeah. Um, what is plus there, is, ten for my jury rigging? Yeah, isn't it? yeah. Is oh, there, and plus fifteen for my mechanical repair. Yeah, you can. Yeah, mechanical repair as well. You can add those two. The way that yeah. um, for those watching the the way you play Mothership, everyone has stats and scores. You roll a D. It's a D one hundred system. You roll that, and you're aiming to get underneath your score. But everyone has their own individual skills that can add ten, fifteen, five to a score. Um, and the way I play it, because um, this is a homebrew world, and I'm sort of we're, we're all learning as we're going and having fun doing it, is that I'm allowing certain things to stack if it makes sense. So Zam, obviously, he's got skills in fixing stuff, being the ship's mechanic, so he can add a couple of skills to make it a bit easier for him to succeed. Yeah, so that would take my 45 up to 70, yes? Yes. Yeah. Roll 71. <laughs> Okay. May. <laughs> um, so, I can't that's believe it. I... That, take a point of stress yep. for the fail. Um, and there is a stress system, so anytime there's a there's a failure, characters will take stress, and that works into a panic system later on. Um, so, so, I'm and, up to five now. As you're working hard on this, you're, you're just. It's not like it's completely failing. You've got the skills to do this, Zam, yeah. but right now. It's just not working. You're not finding the right bits. You're tired. You're, yeah. you know, you're getting more and more wound up. You're hurt say, a more, little bit. More, grum- more grumpy than usual. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's nothing. It's all crap. Surrounded by junk. <laughs> yeah, we're getting the good. <laughs> and the the- hand welders go in on and off all the time. Yeah. And probably when do you do like if you're around in the lower part of the the ship in the um the cargo bay etc you can hear zam effing and jeffing the whole time smacking things with a mallet and and you can tell he's not having a good time of it <laughs> um but can, yes can i can Go. can wendy um perhaps just find her way nearby doing her bit of maintenance and repair internals and just try and do some epic welding just <laughs> You know, yes, we'll say um, some light wall welding. Just yes, to... with the with the shaking and the way everything moved. This isn't like a sleek like starship. This is this is an oil rig and you know kind of that kind of you know. So with the bump, there are some panels that have come off that need fixing. You know, for, for security reasons or just yeah. So, Wendy, do you want to do this near Zam? Yes. 
absolutely. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. So I believe there was a hand gesture involved as well. This is purposeful <laughs> welding. Okay, okay. Purposeful, purposeful welding with an intellect um, role. But what would you like to add? Have you got anything that you can I add to it? Nothing. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to let me use my military training. No, not for this one. Or my athletics. No, I don't think they'll count, count for if this. I did a forward roll into the world. Um, no. <laughs> no, but um, All right. there is something. Um, each character has their own. It won't really. No. Um, what does Wendy have? Each character has um, a sort of trauma response as well. I don't know if it's something that will actually work in Wen- Wendy's one. Um, I know what I've got assigned to. Oh, why can't I find Wendy's sheet? No, yeah, because mine is about... once per session, I can take an advantage on panic checks. Oh, yes, yes, Mine yes. is about what happens when I panic. Yes, yes, yeah. okay. So just um, just bear those things in mind for when things get really bad and <laughs> how that might affect everyone else. But yes, roll away, Wendy, roll away. What are you aiming to get? I'm aiming to get 27 and I rolled 52. <laughs> uh, take a point of stress. <clears throat> As... Like you're trying to weld, and another panel just ka-chung, just falls out, and it's just not, it's just not going right. And oh well. <laughs> you need a hand there, Wendy. Do you? No, I'm good. Me too. Okay. <laughs> the tension. <laughs> um, while thought, this is going I... on, carry on. I was going to say, I thought we were connecting, and you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. After that. Yeah, bond- <laughs> bonding through failure. Yeah. yeah. Such is life. Um, but where are the rest of the crew? Where? What's Dick doing at this moment in time? Um, I'm around in the cargo bay trying to tidy up after Zam because he's made an absolute pigsty of the place after I tidied it up <laughs> and took inventory. But... I'm just going about tutting. Yeah. Oh, this wasn't new. <laughs> so trying to try, trying to put everything back. As he's clearing up the oil, and then there's more oil, and there's more things yeah. going wrong. And yeah, you don't have to roll for janitor check. <laughs> Dab, don't, yeah. don't worry, <laughs> because you're good at your job. You've been doing this long enough. Yeah, um, for the term custodian, but oh, sorry, <laughs> custodian. I'll change that on the Gibbous Incorporated ID cards. <laughs> which, which, which actually exists stick around to the break anyway uh, and while um, Dick is doing this what about the dock in sick bay just um, basically making sure nothing's been damaged in, in, in the impact that everything's where it should be and supplies are all checking over it all great cool. making sure that um, the ship's cat Admiral Mittens is who was quite stressed after the initial bump. Oh, did he fail his check? <laughs> he hasn't taken a point of stress, but you may <laughs> if anything happens to him. Her. What is Admiral Mittens? Oh, it's actually a her, yeah, sorry. Yeah. She. She. Yeah, so, yeah. So you can spend a bit of time with Admiral Mittens, making sure everything's there. He and... doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Sounds about right. Um, and things after the initial excitement things begin to settle down for the day and uh, it takes probably it's about another day and a half before the captain calls the rest of you Dick you would be sitting in the in the bridge with the captain when when you see this Um, but she calls the rest of the crew to the bridge um, and when you all get there, she looks at you all and is like, "Well, we have we had to take a little bit of a, a detour, um, just a, just a few clicks, but it seems um, this satellite relay was not as far as we thought it was going to be. Um, although, however, I think you may have been correct, Doctor." If you um, if you look out the window, you'll see what I mean. And when you look, 
uh, the window. <laughs> yeah, you can see this satellite relay, which is a large, large vessel. And you're used to. It's, it's not like you're you haven't seen like images or you know been aware of what these things are like. There's several tiers. The top of it is there, there is like a. It's, it's almost a, a cylindrical sort of like shape there's like there's there's two decks and then on the top there is lots of like antenna and dishes and panels and all kinds just high power transmitters and on either side um there are sort of huge sort of metallic shiny sort of panels you can see the um, logo of the orbit all communications um on the side quite clearly on the side of this um vessel um, but as you, from your current viewpoint, it's tilted, and th this is because the relay, which should have been, for want of a better term, stationary. A stationary can be in space. I'm not getting too sciencey about this. Um, it's slowly rotating, as if in slow motion. Now, on one side of the structure is a large flat panel. Like I said, one of the panels made up of hundreds of smaller metallic panels, like little hexagons, like almost like you know the James Webb mm. um, camera and stuff. You know, um, very expensive hardware. This is the these are the sort of panels that when the crew were given this job, were told this stuff's worth a lot of money. So if we bring that back, we'll be quids in and everything will be fine. You've seen, like I say, you've seen things like this before. Um, whether it's just circumstantial knowledge or sort of the base awareness. so And this relay should have two of them. It does not. Because the opposite side of the structure has been completely torn away as it turns. You see tiny bits of metallic debris sort of floating around the structure. Um, no doubt emanating from the enormous gaping hole in its side. We can actually see into the structure itself and like, like the corridors that sort of wrap around and sort of disappear and you can see even here that there, there may be the faint sign of some lighting of some kind um, and it is just slowly sort of sort of turning um, on as the structure is it has like the central column and on either sides there are two airlock sort of bays only one of them is currently there because the other one is gone. And you see on as it turns around on the other sort of airlock bay it says Echo 237. And Doc, this very much now that you see it in focus, this is very reminiscent of something you saw past the ship after it collided with it. Now the captain sort of taps into the computer. She speaks to Darcy and she brings up a blueprint of the structure. As you, as the the, the ship was sent blueprints and information about the the jobs that they're about to do. And if you're breaking down this sort of equipment, that sort of thing's quite handy, so you know where to take it and stuff. You see on these blueprints, you see an entire blue, blueprint. But on the outside, it looks very different. Now, my players are currently in roll 20. And I'm going to show them a map of what's currently there. Blueprint, blueprint. <laughs> hmm. Now, for you lovely people at home, just for a bit of reference. And I hope this works. <laughs> um, Share screen. This, <laughs> this <laughs> is... Not that much. This is what they can see. From the two maps, you can see there's the main control deck, and you can see that the, there's the left-hand side of the st structure. On the blueprints you see, there is a mirroring part that should be on the... On the map, it's the right-hand side. Um, the other uh, bit of map on the right, on, that you see on the far right-hand side, I'm trying to describe, describe this and murdering it, apologies. That is the lower space that sits underneath. This is the living quarters um, this used to be a manned vessel, so the the main section was used for all of the work, and then the the two man team used to live in this small little cubicle 
underneath and try and survive <laughs> in there. Um, so, and for the for the player's reference, on the blueprint you see would essentially be um, the bit that is currently cut out of this map. Kind of looks like the bit on the left only flipped, <laughs> just for ease. Um, yeah, so that that's your reference, players, um, for the structure itself. And hopefully that came out all right. So. As the captain, as you all taking on this, and the, the the captain is, the ship isn't stationary. Your ship isn't stationary, but she's just sort of keeping it within a decent distance. She, she's not, she's not getting too close right now. Like I say, there's little bits of metallic de debris uh, floating around. Um, as you all look upon this. Now, what the hell do you think could have done something like this? Do you think it could have been like a meteor, or does it look like um, kind of a clean cut across the bit that's that's gone? It looks like a hell of a mess, and it looks like it's it's oh, torn. Yeah, evidence of fire. It's there are not from where you can see. You would have to get a closer view. Um. But certainly, right now, it just looks like almost as if, like, if you had a if you had a toy, if you had a model of this and just ripped off part of it, that's what's happened. Um, it doesn't look like he would be very sad. <laughs> um, as the captain's, going, God damn it! It would have been nice if we could have had both of those. It looks like looks like something. Like a meteor or something has done half of our work for us. Well, there, sh there should be still plenty that we can junk and trunk, at the very least. But as that... we always, as, as you've always said, half a part, half a ton of junk is better than no junk at all. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Wendy. Um, that's the spirit, although. Um... Judging from the look of this, we're going to be, have to be pretty careful if we um, go on about this. Now, I know there's there's a few sections of this thing, and uh, of course, salvage rights, whatever we get, I don't know. I mean, this this thing has been derelict for years, so there, there's no, been no one in this thing for quite some time. But whatever you, whatever we find is ours, so it might be. Zam. Honey, I know you like to um, cut things up. Yeah. How do you want to go about this? Now, I mean, as it stands, it might be a little easier to cut and pack as is. Half our job has been done, but what do you think? Well, I figure we go for those power cells. We could uh, maybe patch up some of our damage with that. That's good. Well, if they have left some power cells, that would that would be quite handy, indeed. Maybe there's something we could use to uh, jig some coils. That's true. How you, how you getting on with that um, casing? Yeah, yeah, it's not going well. Hmm. You've made a right mesh down there. <clears throat> Uh, Dick, honey, not now. No, not now you don't have to tidy it up. <laughs> I mean, at some point, we're going to have to take slices off this thing. Zam, when we get to that, do you want to do it with the ship's cutter, or do you need to be on site with the, with the smaller one? I think we uh, go in with the smaller cutter. Be a bit more precise with this one. Okay. Well... Yeah, we need to we need to go in and make sure that all the power is off and there's nothing that might. If Zam's right and there's a power cell in there, we don't want to be cutting and strutting and cutting into one of those things because then our trip will be cut incredibly short. So I say I can get her in, I can get Susie in a little bit closer, and then 
I can keep her steady. It's going to be difficult because this thing is turning and there's no way that this ship can keep that thing steady. So I won't be able to come with you. But if you, you guys are going to have to go on and see what the damage is like inside. I mean, we've done this sort of thing before. Um, this one's just a little bit trickier. And certainly, this sort of, like, being a, like a space junker and stuff, there are, as well as dis dismantling stuff on planets, there are the times where you've taken apart, like, just floating bits of scrap or, you know, pods or anything that's just being flown around. So, you, so you, you know that that's part of the job and you're no strangers to suiting up and actually getting the mag boots on and doing the dirty work. But this one, just because of the nature of it, might take a little more concentration. Um, and like whatever you know whatever's on there is reclaimed um, then it is yours um, but your vac suits themselves um, have sort of manned maneuverability sort of units you know the, the, the sort of a <laughs> how do I say it? the astronauts you know the little the packs they have these miniature yeah. ones that help they don't you, you're not going to fly through space like Superman but it, from short bursts it'll get to you where you need to go um, but who is going to take a trip to Echo 237? Sam's going. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? what? Yeah, I think Dick okay. will go. Dick okay. is going. Are we kind of spacewalking our way across, not parking up and um, connecting? The, the way that they, the, the captain will do, she will probably... Because it's moving, to have a sort of connection, because it's sort of turning, it may put strain on it. So she has to. She's going to get as close as she can, so that like when you sort of spacewalk, for better, once we better term, it's a it's a short run and jump. Do you know what I mean? You're not going. You're not. It's going to be safe. I, I'm not going. I'm going to tell you now. I'm not going to make you roll to see if you miss a jump and then float away. There's going to be nothing like that. Oh, nice. Um, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. Everybody wants to see Zam die. <laughs> um. But yeah, as the captain begins like figuring out with Darcy, like the you know the maths of it, and I wouldn't know where to start with that. But she's certainly trying to figure out things. Whoever's going to head over to the satellite relay, a doc. What is the doctor doing? He doesn't want to go, um, <clears throat> but sort of feels like he has to. So he reluctantly. If the rest of the crew's going. One of them's going to hurt themselves, you know. <laughs> and um, and so it, well, they might hurt themselves depending on what they take with them, because everyone has their um, their vac suits, and uh, which so that puts the armor points up then, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. Like your vac suits have an armor point points of three. Okay, now it's up to you. We haven't locked down what these spacesuits are like. Um, they're not super bulky like NASA, but they're hardly like it's not Prometheus like wetsuits running no. along like that. This is they're slightly. I bulky. think it's like first contact kind of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Probably with some extra sort of bits yeah. on on top to make it a bit bulkier. Um, yeah. Dix is noticeably slimmer than everyone else's, um, as he doesn't need the oxygen unit. And things like that. He doesn't need the just to show. Yeah, <laughs> tailoring. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's like a three-piece suit. Now, now we Helmet. we learned last last session that Zam has not modified. He hasn't customized his in any way. Nope. Because there are there's quite a few vac suits as part of this ship, but um, Zam has kept his pretty much company standard. Um, what about everyone else? And I'm looking at Wendy. There you are. <laughs> Um, so Wendy has, has found um, a space sharpie um, and has drawn three hearts along the front of her suit. Nice. Nice. What does a Dix look like? Has he modified it in any way? Has he just... Uh, no. It just tries to keep it as prim and proper as possible. Hmm. Like try and keep it clean. Yeah. And, and ironed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
oxygen, just all over the electronics, just with an iron. <laughs> <laughs> Things are sparking. Um, I would imagine that the docks has not seen too much use. No, no, no. In fact, I sort of imagine he doesn't remember which one is his and just always grabs a random one. So sometimes doesn't quite fit right. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, especially a vac suit. A hazard suit is a completely different thing. That's more for on surface dealing with um, atmospheric conditions. But a vac suit is a completely different kettle of fish. And it is bulkier. And certainly, as it says in the rules... Uh, the players did all get the rule book by the way I'm not being completely mean to them <laughs> with a vac suit speed checks have disadvantage welcome welcome to mothership fine. everyone <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but another thing that the crew can do once they're getting into all of this equipment like bulky equipment is what are you going to take with you Equipment wise, uh, do I even have to uh, answer that question? You are taking your um, your I'm smaller laser. Benice. You're taking the smaller laser cutter known as Benice. Benice, yeah, the on-site laser cutter. Yep. Which, um, for anyone uh, watching or listening, this thing almost looks a little bit like a Gatling gun that has these power cells. It takes a little while to charge up, but it can cut through a ship. <laughs> So, yeah, and I've got my um, extra battery as well. Okay, is there um, just a heads up if you've got um, if you've got vac suits? I'm I'm a generous warden. I'm a nice guy. All right, so I've got my patch kit as well. The yeah? patch kit, yes, yep. yeah. Patch kit should should um, you have any damage or um, to your suit, it will take that will patch the hole and at least make it serviceable until you can get it back or get another one etc depending on where you are or what happens so it's up to you whether you all take a patch kit with you do you take anything yeah. else um wendy what are you going to take uh wendy wendy obviously knows everything um lizzie doesn't so lizzie's currently googling can you weld in space um <laughs> oh yeah yeah we'll be yeah. all right yeah we'll be all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 you're, you're your oxymix right yeah yeah um, space welder, small. The one I was using around the the ship just for maintenance. Okay. Um, and sort of maybe tucked into the pocket of my suit, assuming it has many pockets. Um, a little handmade octopus dolly doll type <laughs> figure, just small, maybe a couple okay. of inches. What is it crafted out of? Toot. debris Toot. Uh, the um, emptied out um, packaging of dehydrated meals that Dick has rehydrated for us and that sort of stuff foil and things that won't explode nice nice so I'd imagine it's that these time. back suits have almost like they have like these sort of pocket sort of pouches of well, utility pouches that you can put like bolts or any kind of thing so you can tuck your I know. Cool. Good luck, charm, or totem, or whatever it means to Wendy. Um, okay. Into that pouch. Uh, what about the dock? First aid kit, trank gun, hip flask. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love to see you drink oh, from that with your helmet. Clunk, <laughs> clunk. Oh, just God damn just it. in case we find an, a, a session with breathable atmosphere. He's always prepared, BJ. Yeah. Always prepared. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just get like a very long straw and just sort of feed it. I thought you meant like leave the bottle on the <laughs> shit <laughs> to the straw. It's like a cable. It's like a cable as he's floating out into space. Um, and... Like one of those Victorian um, diving suits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get the captain just yeah. like bellows. <laughs> <laughs> and Dick, what are you taking with you? Uh, foam gun for foaming, and a screwdriver, and uh, a sample collection kit. Because <laughs> you never know. 
Very true. And um, so everyone has their inventory for their little journey. And the captain lines up the ships. Um, and sure, soon enough, there's a point where she lines it up and it she gets close enough that everyone can have a mini spacewalk out to the vessel. It's a, it's a using the maneuverability sort of packs. It won't be too much problems getting over there. Now, where are you planning to land on that vessel? There is no the, the living quarters. There is no no entrance to that. That's still in one piece. But you can literally just land in one of the corridors of this satellite satellite relay. Uh, <clears throat> I think Sam's going to go to the kind of outer corridor nearest the power cells at the top. Okay, so that he can just get to work with. Uh, so you're you're, you're kind you're kind of yeah. like heading to the sort of northern yeah. section. Are you all going to follow Zan there? Uh, yes, well I am. Cool. Yeah. Um, then I will have everyone. This is just to see how, and everyone has their mag boots, of course. They're, they're attached to these. This is to see how graceful <laughs> you all are. And landing there safely without any problems as this thing is turning as well. So I will have everyone give me a now this is an interesting check <laughs> because I don't know who has zero G. Zam does. <laughs> I would say this may be a speed check or an intellect check. I will say the intellect might be used to pick pick a point and stick to it. This is just to see how well you land and if you well for yeah for Zam speed and intellect. They're the same anyway. Yeah, but uh, I get plus ten with the zero the G. Zero G. If you have zero... this is with disadvantage. Yeah? This, yeah, You're in... yeah. So all of these will be with disadvantage. It's a it's a it's a tricky thing to do. So what you're doing, so you'll be able disadvantage, to disadvantage. Ma- yeah, you'll be able to make it there. You'll all be able to make it there, but it's just how you might have a bump along the but, way. So I'm going to take it the disadvantage. You pick the highest. The one, higher then. roll, yes. Um, and just for you know clarity, a double zero and then a three would just be three. Wouldn't that it? is three. Yeah. So that one's no good <laughs> because uh, I rolled a seventy-seven. <laughs> ha- you so, rolled a you rolled a seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. Okay. Yeah. Now, once again, for the, the people at home watching, there are such things in this game as a critical. Whenever you roll a double on your dice, it can either be a critical success or a critical yeah. failure. Zam just got a critical <laughs> failure. And something might happen, but we'll get the rest of the rolls from the rest of the crew. We'll get back to Zam. Wendy, what did Wendy get? Uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, even with my added athletics. Um... Yeah, I w- yes, I totally would have had ad- ad- had that as well, yeah. Yeah, it was either a sixty-seven or a seventy-two. So, nope. Point of stress. I'm bang my knee on the way. Point of stress for Wendy. What did Dick get? Um, what are all zeros? Is that just ten? All zeros is a hundred. Yeah. Oh, is it? <laughs> if it was double zero yeah. and a ten. The, uh, oh. No, no, no. Double zero and a zero. That's ten, isn't it? Yeah, that would be ten, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because if it was double zero and a ten, that would be ten. No, yeah, it should would be would... ten and a zero. Wouldn't... I always forget this. I always get this mixed up. Nineteen so... a zero is a hundred. Yeah. No, nineteen a zero is ninety. Ninety. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Ten and a zero yeah. on that logic would be ten. 
Yes. So zero 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 is a hundred. A hundred. He got a hundred. Sorry, I've got hundred. If I go zero zero and a three, would that be three hundred? That, no, that's, that's a three. Yeah. That's a three. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. What, what did you see? We're all learning this. <laughs> um, now, what did uh, so Dick failed, and what did the good doctor get? At Thirty. So succeeded. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the doctor sort of makes it across and you see it doc as you're sort of you you're you're perfectly sort of in, in a strange kind of way you expected to be the one that would suffer the most and then you just see Z- Zam is moving and then as this thing turns there's a stray bit of metal that knocks him off course a little bit <laughs> and that ca- that causes the other two to spin out a little bit. So you, Doc, you reach the actual the the deck itself and the boots and you turn just to see the others kind of, they're, they're more tumbling in to the the actual structure itself. Zam, however I don't know if you ever have to do surgery um, You added your uh, point of stress for the failure, yes Zam? Uh, not yet, no. Okay, I'm doing that now, so that puts me up to six. And I need you to make a panic roll. Right, okay. So yeah. this is a d20 roll. You want to get above your stress. Uh, right, so I need to get above a six then. Yes. Ah, uh, 19. You do not panic. <laughs> of course he doesn't panic. <laughs> but but he has a, he has a rough Turned time of it. In inside his space, yeah, yeah, and you can see that Zam as it, it knocks him off a little bit, and his arms he's he's sort of straggling to try. I and go imagine as well. He's like short and squat, and yeah. you know, yeah. and this thing's still turning. So if someone doesn't do something, he might be out of your reach fairly soon. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> grab him. I'll try and grab him. The doc tries to grab him. Okay. <laughs> he just collided with Wendy in, in the midst space. of space. Yeah. I mean. Okay. Okay. And and also Wendy and Dick are trying to get their bearings bef- before the boots go on. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to paint this in the best possible light, Zam. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I take on bridge with the fact, yes, I rolled badly, but now you're making all the crew hate me even more. No. Uh, <laughs> look, look, the, someone doesn't hate you as an arm reaches out to grab you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, what, uh, do I... I will say that you managed to grab hold of his hand, Doc. But you're going to have to give me a strength check to pull him in. Okay. <clears throat> Can't use field medicine on this? Or... No, straight, <laughs> uh, straight up. Duology? <laughs> <laughs> He's not an elephant. Uh, that's a 69. <laughs> and a failure. Nice. Uh... But uh, a sexy failure. The, sex- <laughs> the sexiest failure of the night is um, you. <laughs> you do not. You got hold of him, but you can't get. You can't pull him in, and uh, you get a point of stress, Doc, for this because it's taking quite a lot. Zam is no doubt screaming and effing and jeffing, and you can all hear it. In get me in. <laughs> I'm trying. And it, it, it is putting pressure on your boots, on the mag boots, for a brief second. Just gonna make a roll. Both gonna go floating off into space now, aren't we? <laughs> you do not. <laughs> um, eventually, um, a, <laughs> a bit of um, debris. Hits Zam on the leg, and he spins. He's very unceremoniously. He lands back in, and he mm. knocks you off. <laughs> briefly knocks you off your feet, Doc. As you are literally, you both tumble into the structure, into the zero g structure. None of this has any gravity, clearly. 
so half yeah. of it, half of it's missing. But you're all currently here. You you scramble for a moment to try and get your footing and try and get your feet on the floor. Hit hear that. Ka-chung, ka-chung. And the man. Well, that was a success. Thanks, Doc. Give me a drink. <laughs> and uh, you hear a voice over the comms. You uh, disappeared for a moment. There is is. Do you all get on okay? No. Ship shape, Captain. Good, good, good. Well, just be safe out there. Just keep me posted. And uh, like I say, don't do anything stupid. And uh, you all turn with that. And it's it's strange seeing the ship. You can see like the Susan O'Brien kind of trying to keep pace, but this this vessel is turning, but the mag boots are keeping you in place. Um, do you remember those little what were they called? The Magna Force. Do you remember those little figures oh, that had like God, the... yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Com, com Starcom. Starcom. Yeah. Com, yeah. yeah. Um, you like little Starcom figures on a on a rotating thing. <laughs> um, that's the special effects that we have in this show. Oh yeah. Um <laughs> And as you um, look back down into the corridor of this thing, you can see that there are. It is bathed in red emergency lights. And we'll pick that up after the break. We'll see you in about five or ten minutes. And uh, yeah, to see what on earth is on. Happened to Echo 237. What off earth? Hey everybody, Vince here, Game Warden and General Mischief Maker when it comes to the Safe Space Show. Just wanted to say, we hope you're enjoying the show so far, and if you want to find out more about the other podcasts and general news that we have on this network, then why don't you follow us on social media. On Twitter, we're at LawbreakerPod, and you can follow us on Instagram at LawbreakerRadio. Just to be clear, that's L-O-R-E, Breaker Radio. But follow us there. We'll be sure to follow back and interact with the community and let you know a bit more about what's upcoming on the Lawbreaker Radio Network. But uh, I think without further ado, enough of me. Let's get back to the show. And welcome back. So when we left off, the crew of the O'Brien had just made it to whatever was left of the satellite relay station, Echo 237. And after a bit of a tricky time getting to one of the the decks, the control deck, and they almost lost someone, briefly, had it not been for a quick-thinking doctor, (laughs) um, they they are all on this structure. So... So begins the exploration. And Mothership is very much a game that is is built on, you know, mystery, exploration. It's not just, here's a fight, here's a bit, here's a fight. There's lots of story develops and like you you loot and salvage and all kinds of things. Because that's how you survive in this game. Sometimes you survive just by the things that you find. Um, Or not. We'll see. Because the (laughs) the crew are on this... Strange, ancient, not ancient, but old uh, satellite relay station, and they can see red lights in the distance as they as they see the corridor curves around in front of them. Who is? Um, what do you guys do? It's over to you guys. Where are you heading? And everything, the movements are a little bit slower because you're still using your mag boots and to venture through, and like there's bits floating in the air. Did you say, Vince, that the only light thing in here is the red emergency lighting? You did break up for a moment there, PJ. But yes, you are correct. There is red emergency lighting. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no. So, (laughs) um, the the more mechanical guys would know that this is probably due to um, 
whatever's happened and this is just backup power that switched on the emergency lights so you can see it further further in everything is basked in that wonderful red glow that in no way worries anyone the vac suits do have a headlamp on them don't they so yeah we could put the headlamps mm. on oh, what a visual that must be yeah and there's probably like the you know the you know when they have the lights the sort of halogen sort of glow underneath like as we're all turning no to sense. talk to each other we're shining lights in each other's faces yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. and they all float off into space at the end yeah um, <laughs> look at the wall when you so talk to me with with wendy's maintenance mm-hmm. is it worth going to the computer systems and seeing if there's anything can be taken from there yeah oh i was thinking if you were going to if zam was going to power cells yeah i would go and look for what would be the next most valuable yeah loot um and it depends how old this kit is as to yeah. whether it's got like second hand value um i mean mm. i'm i'm trained in computers mm-hmm. oh right okay so i can go to the like yeah. computer systems and communication well, backups we got like a vac suit storage and a tools and maintenance equipment area that could be looted I think well Doc would like... go with, with Sam then if the other two are going to the computer bit. Vince, why is the music on all scary? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know what you mean. Because slander. Absolute slander. Zam's just, uh, Zam's just fired up Benice. Yeah. And <laughs> the way he's rolling, this is not going to go well. Has he fired so... up Benice? Right. No, not yet. He's going to get to the yeah. power cell. I would imagine that Benice then, is yeah. something that also sort of connects to his back in some way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not like he's wandering around like Blaine no, from Predator. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. no. Okay. So, okay. So who who is going where again? Uh, Zam's going to the power cells. Okay. The, the, the... Doc's going with Zam. Okay. Also, because in the doc's head, Sam's the one most likely to to himself. So. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, surely you should just leave him to die then, you know. <laughs> okay. okay. So, um, Wendy, uh, Wendy and Dick are sticking together. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Head for computers. We, we're going to the computers. Okay. So we will. Um, we will pick up first with um, the doc and Sam. As you all sort of head across in in a unit before you come to the first sort of power cell bay, to and um, and the doc and Zam are heading off in one direction. You see that um, Dick and Wendy continue down around this corridor before disappearing out of sight. Um, the the door is shut. There is there is a sort of um, access panel, uh, a code panel for this, for the first power cell bay that you get to. Okay. It's like an emergency lock has shut it down. Is it like a letters and numbers panel? This this one is just numbers. This one's just numbers. numbers. Yeah. I shrug and just try two, three, seven. <laughs> Um, meh, meh. that doesn't work. But I'm out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Try uh, five, two, three, seven. <laughs> Are you I, it, just I give it a try. <laughs> a B C D E. <laughs> <laughs> we may have to cut back to them in two years. <laughs> um, <laughs> just do one, two, one, two. That's everyone's code, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One, uh, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it is a sort of. Meh, meh. You can't open these. Right. Okay. So we don't we have do like comms. you. Yeah, you have short Please range thought. comms on these. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was going to say we don't have like any kind of investigation checks that we could do or anything, but can we look at the panel to see if any of the numbers look more worn than? <laughs> The 
I do you know what? I, I I'm not I'm not going to get you to have stress for this, but I'll just just roll just just make an intelligence roll. Oh um, shit! Oh come on! Nineteen. So success. Oh, I got fifty six. I I don't think there's. But. I don't think there's anything I can add to that. Anyway, you won't get stressed for this. This no. is just uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, the doc does see that there's a couple of buttons that are a little more worn. Is it one two one two? <laughs> <laughs> no, it seems to be the eight and the four. Um, but that's the only sort of, and it's very, very slight, very slight. Okay. Okay, Zan's gonna contact Dick and Wendy, and just say, uh, "Can you uh, check the computers, see if there's uh, any codes or anything for the uh, power cell doors?" We'll It'll have a four and an eight in it. <laughs> okay. I look at Wendy. <laughs> check, check around it that there might be a, like a post-it oh, okay. something written underneath it okay. I'll check for a post-it <laughs> there's a post-it there's half, <laughs> half the station has been ripped off but all the post-its are still perfectly stuck <laughs> <laughs> get milk <laughs> <Things lie. laughs> must call mother um, yeah <clears throat> No, there is no post-it near the access panel for the power cells. I wonder why. You know, someone might have etched it underneath. <laughs> yeah, 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 true, true. But, you know, you, you may... No. No, you'll have... Damn it. Yeah. These were clever people. Um, but as we cut to... And um, as you head over to the, uh, the other power cell bay, you can see that this also has a locked down door. Same, same thing. Same same key code. Um, same same wear on the keypad as well then, is that? Um this one has a different wear. Okay. This one is two one. One two one two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are we just gonna try like eight four two one? Oh. Do do you want me to come back with the welder? The little welder. Benice feel like overkill. Yeah, yes. Benice would be overkill. I think. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, yeah, we could use your help on this one. <laughs> Do you leave, Dick? Yeah, I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, I'll be in the uh, computer room. See if I can get a, uh, you know, access to them. Okay, so you're you're heading to like the the interior, the inner circle. Is that the monitoring panels you're going to, Dick? Yeah, yeah, the computer systems room, okay. if okay. I can. Please, thank you, Vince. Okay. Then uh, we'll cut back to Dick in just a moment. As Wendy... Jum, 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 as she sees... That's not my boots, that's just Wendy just yeah. really frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> just, just jabbing away at these access panels. Um, <laughs> as you can... As you spark up the hand welder... Um, I will allow you well, to make right. uh, make a roll on this. Which one are you going for? Are you going to the one closest to you first? The yeah? nearest one. The yeah. nearest one. Um, then I would say there's no dexterity in this game, so I would probably say Wendy. What do you want? Give me a to use the hand welder, how, what stat would you like to use for it? Convince me. <laughs> um, I won't go for that one. Can I just go strength? Strength, and kind of and I will say strength of will and purpose. Um, as Zam is there as well, you get advantage on this. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Don't try and butter them up now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you did this, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you created Zam. I was going to say, you created this monster. <laughs> so I shall take the 19, which is a success. Yes. So, and certainly you begin cutting 
through the doors. It's that it's that Beautiful. wonderful alien sort of like <laughs> with all the sparks going. <laughs> it's really uh, neat. Yeah, really really neat. Before eventually, <laughs> and with the strength roll, it makes sense, Wendy, as well, because the door immediately opens up a small crack, and you have to then pry it open. Um, in this sort of power cell bay. You immediately look look in and you can see in this particular one there are certain casings that have fallen over that is in slight dis- disarray there doesn't seem to be any power cells of use in this one there's none left which is probably for the best with these small miniature, miniature for one of better term bombs in this <laughs> thing that just got whacked <laughs> so uh yeah so th- but um and the, the mechanical casings, Zam, you would immediately look at it and just think, this is a, this is older sort of power cell units um, that have been pretty much mostly taken. Um, there is a, a little bit of debris, and you do see there is a small something's floating in the air in front of you, and it seems to be a, a small access card with a name on it. I will grab that. Okay. It says um, Drake eight four two one. On it. That eight, was the code. Eight four two one would have done it as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go and help Dick. <laughs> so when <laughs> she hears these two older gents huffing and puffing to themselves, <laughs> you head back. But before you get there, Wendy, Dick, you head into the. Um, the inner circle of the the communication and monitoring station everything basked in a red light they there are vast panels with screens that are all off everything seems to be switched off um normally you would in a sci-fi sort of scenario there would be lights you know there'd be all these flashing lights everywhere there's none of that everything seems to be off powerless completely completely dead in this place you do see there seems there's a small um, there's a coffee mug there's an old metallic coffee mug that is still like on a coaster by one of the monitoring systems and by these monitoring systems they all have they have small stools that are like welded in place in front of all these monitoring sort of stations one thing that does and in the first one the first larger one with all these panels and you do see a couple of post-it notes, but just with scri- <laughs> just with scribbles, numbers, different sort of like you know codes and things like that. There's there's not an A four two one because you need an access card for that. Um, but, but certainly you, you would imagine. And there's a, a couple of post-its that just fly by. With, um, need new milk or something like that written on it. Um, in in the in, in the zero gravity. Um, but you do notice when it comes to the the second station which is the computer systems and, and communication backups because mm. you were heading there as well weren't you? yeah there is it all looks dead apart from there is a blinking red light there is there is a sort of unit that has several and the way that this I, I like that sort of retro futuristic vibe which is like cool sci-fi stuff but all has that also has that chunky you know alien vibe of like everything is cartridges and stuff like that do you know what I mean you've got yeah. to manually do things so there are like these storage cartridges in and above and each one of them has a light above it on the first one at the top there's a blinking light um, is the cartridge pushed in it's still in they're, yeah they're yeah, all, yeah, they're all yeah. in their bank yeah. there's stuff. a couple of them there are a couple of them that are missing from their banks but and there's only there's to be honest there's only a couple left but there's one in there and the light's blinking. Uh, is there like a keyboard on the terminal? That yeah, yeah, there there is a keyboard on the tap, terminal. Tap the space bar. You would have to. I would. Uh, you'd have to. I'd say make an intelligence check, but you can use if you've got computers and or any sort of computer skill. I have got computers. I have. Uh, hacking in my expert skills. Can I use hacking? You can. 
because this mm-hmm. is this is a monitor. This is a system that has been down for a long time. This is this has picked something up. Fucking hell! <laughs> That's gone well then. Yeah, it all went great. Eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. Yeah. Which is um, double, isn't it? Point of stress. Yeah. Yep. 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 Give me a panic yep. check. Oh, hang on. What? What I'm is really your? Panic. What is your panic currently? Uh, my stress is on four. Your stress is on four. So you got to roll above a four. Twelve. You're okay. <laughs> Can you see how this game is awesome? As things get more tense. <laughs> just pressing a space bar. How's this going wrong? <laughs> because it's not the space bar you need to press. Uh, have you tried switching you it off and on key. again? Yeah. Um, Control Alt and Delete. It's not working, yes. and, and you try like all F four. You try plugging in some wires, and then <laughs> there is some sparking, and Whoop. like there is like some buzzing and. These chunky discs, you can tell, are beginning to heat up. You need to act quick. Ooh, uh, um, uh. I start tapping the space bar again. Anything? It's in? not on. It's not on. It's not on. Yeah. Uh, 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 okay, I pull. I pull out the one that's blinking, or try okay. to pull it out because okay. it's bank. There is a. There is a small latch, but give me a give me a strength check because it's been there a while. You flick the the latch and you're trying to pull this out because these are these aren't like a this isn't like a phone size. This is a something you've got to pull out. Eighty eight. <laughs> Come on, I'm changing these dice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that this, like a critical? That is a critical fail. You got another point of stress and make me another panic check. <laughs> you got to get whatever. Is it five now? Roll me that d20. Panic checks are d20s, by the way, for anyone mm. listening. That's rolled away. I've got another d20. <laughs> He's panicking himself. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible, Vince. Time out. <laughs> what are you doing is IT. <laughs> 17. 17. <laughs> 17. You're, 17. You're, you're all right, but the. The actual the handle of this disc pulls off in your hand. So it's so it's still in there. It's still in there. It looks like it's jostled a little bit, and it seems to be stuck in there. It's going to it's going to take some nifty fingers to try and get this thing out without damaging it. I get out my screwdriver and try and uh, okay <laughs> wedge it out. Okay. <laughs> now, does this, this come is on... why the android went nuts and killed us all? <laughs> <laughs> this okay. So you're going to try and quickly just get the <laughs> screwdriver in there and then try and prise it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How are you? Count as hacking? How are you? That is not going to be hacking. How are you going about this? Are you having? Are you thinking about it, or are you going to just brute force this thing out? Um, how hot is it getting? Is it starting to smoke? A little bit of smoke. Has started at the back. Uh, I'll try and be as gentle as I can, you know, without like trying to snap it off or anything. But okay, okay. So that, yeah, so, so there's no handle. But um, and give me that intellect check. Do you have anything that could help you with this? Oh no. Okay. Absolutely not. <laughs> Hopefully these new die. And this is when Wendy <laughs> arrives to see Dick. Sort of, he's struggling with this. I'm picking up post-its <laughs> and putting them in my pocket. I've rolled a 54. Oh, and that's... I, I had to beat 48. So, oh no. Well, th- th- I mean, the good news is it wasn't a critical fail, so the screwdriver stays in one piece. But do I, think... I still get a bit of stress? <laughs> you do get another point of stress. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy! When... <laughs> when did you see this? Is that you? Yeah, what's going on? It's, it's, it's starting to heat up. I'm trying to get these things out of there. <laughs> and I, I beckon her to these. You can see, you can see what's happened now. Like there's, you can't smell it, but there's definitely 
sparks are beginning to happen. You did see Dick just jabbing at it with a screwdriver, which is a very, very silly thing to do and could have gone very badly. <laughs> Literally come here with a welder. I mean, what do you want? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> are you leaving the disc in there? Can I have um, another go at it? Or is what, 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 Wendy having a go? What, what, what is it? What do you want? Why Why do you want this? It's, it's, it's starting to heat up and smoke. I'm, I'm scared we're going to start a fire. Can we start a fire? Uh, technically, in the vacuum of space, no, you uh... guys. <laughs> be a space fire. Space fire. Mm. Space I'm doing fire. space welding, we can have space fires. Yeah. 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 Sharp world. Here's a spoiler. Don't think too much about science when it comes to this game. The game that I run. <laughs> because I don't understand any of it. This is why um, Professor Brian Cox isn't here then, is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> going to say, at the moment when we get to medical checks, PJ's going to just be like, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah whatever. whatever. What I did was I fixed them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can I fix it by hitting it? He's just going to hit the thing out of the... Oh, no. Can I... Can I? What did we want? We wanted some strength. I don't know if I would have brought this with me. I have a toothpick. A titanium toothpick. It's in my kit. It, is in, it is in your personal kit. It's in my personal kit. I'm, yeah. I'm wondering if I would have brought it with what? me. Something that, that big. Yeah. What are you yeah. going to do with it? Kind of... Okay. <sighs> Leverage tiny. You said you wanted tiny thing, fingers to get in there. Okay, you're gonna have to be quick thinking about it. All right. You get one. This is the last chance that you get to get this story's disc out. Okay. What would you like to roll? It's. I would say it's either going to be. Oh, it doesn't sound like you're using your intellect to do it. But I, I was going to go strength, but that doesn't feel right either. I would say because of the nature of the... Oh, I hate to do this to you. Go on. I will, there's nothing important on there. I will say... I will say, do a speed check, but I'll allow you to add your military training. Quick thinking. Oh, thank you. What does that's a thirty-two against a thirty-seven? Thank you for letting me. <laughs> and you, you see, like Wink. at first, Wendy seems non-plus, but then, like, she looks at it, and you see it, Dick. There's a there's a strain. She goes into a zone in some ways. You can see it on her face. She just she pulls out the. She doesn't even look for the titanium. She just pulls it out and then. Immediately just starts filling around and then gives it a good yank and takes this storage cart, cart charge. And you can see, Wendy, that the handle has been broken off. You can see the deck of them. And um, hand over the, the cartridge and just say, Thank you, Jezebel. <laughs> oh, we're naming toothpicks now. Brilliant. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Brilliant. Get that merch ready, I say. Uh... <laughs> Note yourself. <laughs> Okay, uh, so Dick, you have this somewhat battered, and it looks um, on the connections. It looks a little bit tarnished, maybe a little bit melted in places. But we'll have to see. Thank you, but, Wendy. But it's still usable. It's all right. Sure. Hopefully, yeah. we can get some uh, information about on this. It's. Is there anything else in this room that looks like valuable computer equipment that we should salvage? Vince. <laughs> A lot of this looks... I mean, there's lots of monitoring stations. There's nothing really... Unless you open things up and try to like just basically take things out. Pre, you know, It's all a bit retro. It's all a bit mm -hmm. retro, yeah. yeah. This is a decommissioned satellite station, so... you know, even, even for your ship, it may not be usable. But your ship has lots of scrap, so yeah. if you want to but, go... But for salvage, it's like anything we get, we, we can yeah. sell kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So, just yeah. for good stuff. Yeah. Well, you can copper say wire. copper. Oh, wait, people always want copper. Okay. Copper. Yeah. Let's strip out some right, copper. we're going to start stripping. Strip in the copper. <laughs> um, so, why you guys? I mean, you you can certainly like pick up some miscellaneous well, salvage. Might be looking want. for like uh, I don't know, like a main power turn 
back on lights type thing? I would say you would know I, I'll give you this you would know that in this the, the red light is the backup power that's on so you would need to go to an access terminal for that you're, you're not sure depending on what Zam and Dr. Forrest find in the power cells the power cells are probably the thing that will switch everything else on fair enough but the the, the access terminal and everything is what controls the backup power and things like that. So you'd need to head over, head over to there. Meanwhile, with Zam and Doc Forrest back at the other power cells, you uh, you use the key code. I'm guessing. Yeah. Eight yeah. four two one. Eight four two. <laughs> eight four two one, and uh, you uh, as the doors they open. And you see, like, a bay of sort of power cells. And this room also looks like it's been sort of... Moved, ab- like, it's, it's been tussled and, and moved about. But there is there are some panels from the ceiling that have been loosened and sort of hanging down. There's wires. There's wires and cables just hanging down near these. There, There is a power cell in there. There's one power cell that would need reconnecting. If you were to put power, you would know this, Sam. It would need reconnecting to, if you wanted any power to this place, or you could take it with you. Um, you may be able to use it on your ship at some point. Okay. Um, but in the, the cables and stuff that have hung down, and, and certainly there are panels that are just, the, the panels that have fallen from this, the ceiling are floating in the air. There is something that is immediately quite striking to you about it um, the light the red lights are sort of flashing in this and in amongst all the wires the wires and cables and everything there seems to be something caught up amongst it all and that it's just slowly it's it's flowing in this zero g it's flowing like seaweed under the sea is and there's something that there is there is something organic that looks organic within it you need to get a little bit closer to see what it is I get a little bit closer <laughs> <laughs> don't get excited Wendy <laughs> <laughs> um, as you um you get a little bit closer. You can see that in amongst all the the cables and wires, there is there is a hand in there. It is, and when you look further, it is a good. It's a human arm that goes. Up until the cuts, it stops about at the forearm. That is seemingly sort of caught up within all of these wires. Um, it looks partially melted, and it's missing one of its fingers. And another one of the fingers looks like the bone is visible, like the skin and sinew and everything has just been melted off. And there is a little bit of detail you can see on the forearm itself, the skin of the forearm before it is lost within all these these wires and everything. I need roll, to leave. Roll an in- intellect check. Doctor, please? Nope. 88. 88. Point, 88. point of stress and panic which makes mm-hmm. sense because I was going to ask you to roll panic check anyway. It's a cursed number. <laughs> it is. It is. So... I've got to, for panic, I've got to roll above my current stress. Is yes, that... what is your current stress, Doctor? Four. And I've rolled a twelve. Okay. It is, it is shocking. It is... Your your mind races and you, you can feel your heart in your chest. It's like seeing this human arm in here. But you you don't lose it. 
And that Zam, go. Zam is leave. at this point. You can see that the doc is starting to freak out. You're kidding, doc. There's an arm. We should go. I don't know why there's an arm. I don't want to find out why there's an arm. We should go. Yeah, we got to sort out this power situation first. I'm gonna call to I'm gonna call to Wendy and Dick and find out if they want power, or if they are happy for me to take the cell. Okay, so you get the message through from her Zam on the comms. Hey, uh, Wendy, Dick, uh, you uh, you need any power down there, or are you happy for me to just take this cell? What do you think, Wendy? Oh, all these computers are so old. And... I'm not even sure they'll work. Yeah. We can just take it, I think. I mean, all right, I'll take the cell. Where, where not, are you standing like as you this say thing this? Work again, are we? Where are you standing as you say this, Sam? <clears throat> uh, you'll be near the power cell. You're near the power cell. Yeah. <laughs> he, would have, he would have been making his you way went, to you the went power into cell. you went into the room near the cables that are hanging down. So the dock went in near the cable, so I figure I'd move towards the power cell. Yeah. That way it's almost yeah. like the to describe better, there's this box room. Yeah. The power cells are on the other side of the room. Yeah. And the cables are hanging down. It just basically okay. looks like cables are, are hanging down. Yeah. You I it's up to you whether you've noticed what's here. But you would have had to sort of duck underneath it, which you did. If you said you were on the other side, you're on the other side of it. If you're near the power cells. Okay, yeah, yeah. I figured like Zam's not really paying attention to it. <laughs> not paying attention. And stuff. No, so it, I would imagine it's as, as Zam sees the power cells, he's sort of ducking underneath all these wires, yeah. and that's when the doc notices what is hanging. Yeah. Maybe he kind of disturbs it as he's moving it, and then the arm just yeah. kind of like jolts down. Yeah, a bit it just jol- jolts down a bit. Um, and you see this. Doc. But as Zam, and you're looking at the power cell, yeah? Yeah. So you've got your back to this. Yeah. As he's talking, you see the arm begin moving. And then the wires begin to shudder before some of them, like mechanical struts, begin to appear at the side, almost like strange spider legs, like centipede legs, as this hand then slowly begins moving towards Zam, and you can see that all of these cables are attached to this thing. It is like a snake-like centipede that is heading towards Zam. I'll I'll shout a warning. Can I... (laughs) You can, yeah, you see this happen, um, but I will say this. <laughs> Bye, Zam. <laughs> <laughs> um, in order to shout that warning, both of you need to make a fear save. Okay. Okay. Um, got nothing that'll help with this. No, I can't see anything <clears throat> that would particularly help me. Oh, here we go. I needed oh, 14, I got 18. It's a fear save, yeah? Yeah. So 32 is what I needed. Yeah. Uh, I got a 92. Okay, so you both fail. Yeah. So this, you do not get a chance to react first as this thing yep. sort of moves down and it flows it flows outwards and you see the hand in this zero gravity doc you don't even get a chance you're stunned into silence sort of like seeing this strange sort of it's flowing and then you see it doc you see the hands as it curves up there is a massive sort of cable that attaches itself to the back of the hand and then it reaches for Zam. Okay. Zam's still got his back to it. Zam's well, got yeah. his back to yeah, it. He's, so. just, he's just trying to disconnect <laughs> so. his power cell. 
Why didn't we split the party? <clears throat> I want to know why the coffee cup is still on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> is this a post-it note? As, <laughs> as, as, I can make things from them. Azam, you feel this thing, something hit you in the back. Oh, and, and you God, feel something. What are you doing behind there? Crawling <laughs> over your shoulder. And with what a sort of. What the hell's wrong with you, Doc? Get and up. and as, as you turn around, you see this hand crawl over the visor Jeez, what the hell's of this? your spacesuit. And God. you can see it is a melted human hand. But in its palm, there is a hole that has rows and rows and rows of sharp metallic teeth. And it's just going. <laughs> And it's and you can see it's it's making that sort of it's it's squeaking against your visor, but it cannot get purchase. Can I try and wrestle it off? You are you are okay. We're on to the next round, so everyone now can make a speed check. You would probably hear the other two of you would hear this, so everyone is going to make a speed check. The way that thing to check though. Go on. Um, I should have seven stress now, yeah, because I failed that last yes. roll. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um. So while we roll in, sorry? you are everyone is rolling a speed check. Yeah. Okay, and the way that encounters or like violent encounters or things like this work in Mothership, there is no I'm not rolling against anyone. If the crew succeed on their speed check, they go first. If they fail, whatever it is goes first. So it's as simple as that. But remember, two of you are on the other side, and the rounds are kind of like ten seconds in space. Can we add things to our speed checks? Yes, if you... Um, like I will allow, military I will, I, training! I will allow that. Yeah, military training, I will allow that. I don't think zam has got anything that can help. It doesn't really. matter even if I could... No, well, I've I've rolled an nope. eighty-five anyway, so oh, I rolled an eighty-four. Ah, oh, that's nice. <laughs> Sixty-seven, so no. Okay. Oh, thirty-three. I had to beat thirty-five. Yes. Oof. So, Dick, you can go first. You are you're going to have to. It might take an entire turn to get to where you can, where you know they are. I figured Sam screaming over the comms. You can hear you hear the panic. <laughs> One day we better go. <coughs> and uh, Dick, is that is that what you're doing? You're just basically booking it. I mean, in terms I'm of running like, on the spot. If we're using a, another popular RPG TTRPG term, your uh, action dash. <laughs> you I are am action, action dashing. So you're using kind of like your two movements for, for one of you. The, the yeah. action economy to just get there as far as, as so it you, gets me to the to, to the, that to that door the very top it's the, the top the one top that, on yeah, the map yeah, yeah the top one yeah. and certainly you get there and you see what is happening everyone else failed their spe- speed check yes yep um you would see that the rest of this thing sort of it continues to move down out from the ceiling and with the wrench of metal a sharp bit of shrapnel comes down with it almost like a tail and it sort of whips round and it's and it whips round to hit zam with this sharp bit of shrapnel and you can see that as this thing moves there is horrible sickly dark black brown oily like ooze that is sort of like it sort of drips and floats through space but I'm going to see if I can hit Zam <laughs> with this thing and it misses <laughs> as this thing as Zam is recoiling and uh, as you see Zam as you panic and recoil yeah, he's just got it and he's just like fighting yeah. with it and, yeah. this, and as he's fighting with it this thing cannot it, it can't stab him um, what were the? What is everyone else going to do, Wendy? It may take your turn to get there. Now, um, can I pick up the mug and then run? <laughs> okay, you pick up the mug. It takes a little while because it's magnetic. That's why it's stuck in and it hasn't. It's not floating around. So there's a little metallic mug. You pick up. 
<laughs> yeah. So you will be able to get there on this turn by the end of this. As Wendy's doing this, as Wendy's approaching and Doc, you see Dick has just arrived and Zam is fighting with this strange almost necrotic centipede of metal and flesh. What is this, Doc? Doc Divine, uh, most <laughs> face bullshit. <laughs> Never mind what it is, get it off! You try you're just it. leaning against the wall with your arms yeah. folded at that point. Vin- Vince, can I see any other organic components other than the hand? Um, there is a certain... There's You, you can possibly see other bits of flesh but there's nothing really it seems like the hand is the majority of this thing um I'll allow an intellect roll if you want to like give it a good look okay. I'll, I'll allow that for free because I can give you a bit more informa- information and that is six. Oh, so that's a success yeah oh brilliant <clears throat> um then you you would have clocked this as it came down. There was a tattoo on the forearm. It seems to be like of Nordic designers, like a hammer that had like two snakes sort of wrapping around it. Before the bottom of the tattoo is just tarnished by all this melted skin. Um, you see some of these strange centipedes like mechanical spider like legs that have popped out from within these wires. Some of them seem to have. A slightly organic look to them, like bits of them are made up of muscle and bone. But it's a real hodgepodge of different things that have come together in some kind of way. Can I... Um, is it possible for me to take a shot at the hand with my trank gun? The hand... At, at the moment, Zam is... Um, sort of wrestling with it. Unless you've okay. turned round, Zam... Yeah, I figured at this point I would have like, yeah, turned, turned around because these two idiots are just stood there watching yeah. as I'm wrestling with this thing. <laughs> you can, um, and in terms of, your, I mean, it is nearby, so you can take a shot with your drank drink gun if you want. Yeah, I think I will. I'm trying to remember what I do, how I do that. So it will be a combat roll. Oh, yeah. Uh, 29 my combat's 31 Ooh. so roll your um, damage roll a damage is an A it's the target must make a body save at advantage ah, I see. or fall unconscious for 1d10 rounds okay good shot doctor very good shot yeah. bloody save Okay, right. Here we go. Do you say it disadvantage or was it advantage? Adva- ad- ad- advantage. Advantage. <clears throat> oh, I just made it. <laughs> uh, this it hits this thing, and you see it sort of it the the dart sort of gets lost within that and it it shudders for a moment but it keeps going okay okay um at this time uh, i think zam you're you've still gonna have to go what are you doing yeah so uh, i'm gonna try and like you know pull it off okay so make a strength check yeah i haven't really got anything that can help me am i oh strength it's 34 Oh, come on. 62. 62. So that's another point of stress. Yeah. <laughs> stress. How are you looking with your stress? Uh, I'm on eight, eight now. Okay. Um, so uh, if I get up to 20, what happens then? Oh, if 20 you, is the maximum. If you have a panic check, you'll probably, you'll probably yeah. be able to die. Uh, <laughs> but don't worry. You might die before yeah. then. Everyone make yeah. a speed check. Oh, I don't know why I did it. I didn't need to. 
Uh, an 80 and a 0, so that would just be 80, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 18. 1 8, so that's success. Nice. Do I get do I get stressed because of that failure or is that just a <laughs> I'm not I won't do it for the okay. for the initiatives, okay. yeah. Yeah. Right. I could do, but that could be brutal. <laughs> um, no. And Zam's having a bad day. <laughs> Zam's having a great time. Um Okay, what did Wendy get? Uh forty for a fail. Okay. Dick, what did you get? Uh fifty six fail. 56. So, Doc, you go first. I'm just going to run in and try and pull it off then at this point, I think. Okay. Okay, then, Doc. Um, make a strength check. Can I use my zoology? <laughs> um, I don't think I'll allow that. No, if, I'm if, if, it was Zeno, if it was xenobiology, then maybe. But... I have xenobiology? No, I don't. Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, strength that is oh success 17 <laughs> might have to check this dice <laughs> the MVP that is Dot Forest sort of like oh. dum, dum, and he grabs as and as you're pushing you've managed to push it away from you slightly Zam yeah. and then the Doc sort of grabs hold of it and you have you have hold of it Doc as it sort of it begins sort of thrashing <laughs> do you do you, um, is there anything else you'd like to do in your turn? Do you want to move? You can move. Or, I mean, you're all in close quarters and Wendy and Dick are in the, in the doorway. Don't. I'm, I'm, sort of, I'm just holding it like that now, am I? Yeah, yeah, as this thing is. And it's probably... It's, it's like you just, I would say, an Alsatian size. Do you know what I mean? If you grabbed hold of an Alsatian and picked up, this thing is big. I don't think there's like... anything else I really can can okay. do then. Okay. Um... So he, the docs he put he grabbed it off, and you can see now like the bits going, and this this strange movement of of metal wire and organics is sort of it's like it's like nothing you've ever seen before. Make a sanity save. Oh fuck! Okay. As you are very as you're. Twenty. <laughs> Good man, MVP. The duck is the man. <laughs> I never roll like this no, in D and D. Save those for this game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as, as you're sort of, sort of struggling with this thing, but you're also you're taking. You get more details of that's probably when you see the tattoo, like fully, and the hand sort of like begins to twist around. The rest of you failed your speed checks, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As as this hand sort of turns, sort of snaps around, and then it reaches out for the doctor, just it, and it goes for his shoulder. <laughs> this thing just can't munch on any of you. <laughs> As it's strugg- as you're struggling, it's just going, and this is at the point where you see the the more of this thing. It's like, sort of... um, Jesus Christ! And it's it's, but it's it's not out of your grip. It's just trying to get at you. Um, who got the highest roll? Who got the lowest roll after? I got an eighty. Yeah, so it won't be you. Of forty. Forty. So I'm sure. I think Dick, you got any fifties, didn't you? I think. Yeah, fifty-six. Yeah. So, Wendy, you're next when you see this happening, and as as Doc is holding it, there's even more of this strange, strange orange this sludge just flowing into the room. <laughs> what, what do you do? Um... Oh, actually, I think because it's the, this is the first time you've seen something like this. Mm-hmm. I should have. Shame on me because there's so much going on. Um, but with panic checks, whenever I think they they kick in, whenever anyone sees something that is likely to make you panic. <laughs> so, if you would like to roll me a panic check before your turn, Wendy. Uh, that's the twenty, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's a natural twenty, which isn't going to come up into on Friday's <laughs> <laughs> 
um, <laughs> but but with that natural twenty, you are locked in. Cool. Yeah. However, when I, whenever I panic, I didn't panic. You didn't panic. That's good. Yeah. No, that's all cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so what what do you do? Me. Can I see the the palm? And the little kind of beep, beep, yeah, beep, beep. I would I would say this thing is thrashing around, and as the, as it tries to get the dock, you can see this thing has a mouth in the back of it and a cable sort of going through the. I don't know how we're gonna do this. Can I run at it and take a swing and try and whack it right in the palm with the metal cup? <laughs> yes. Really hurt. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, roll me a combat check. With whatever um, can you want to use my military training or my athletics. Do you know what? I will allow both military improvised weapons. It's an improvised weapon, for want of a better term, and I'll allow the athletics because you're going to have to with the spacesuit. You're going to have to really push hard to make a connection. Yay! Success. <laughs> Just okay. <laughs> okay. Roll me. Um, I would say with that. It would be a D5, so roll me a D10 for damage, mm-hmm. but then I just half it, whatever you are. One. Okay, so it, it does one point of damage. It does one point of damage. It does one point of damage, and, and you see this thing now as it lifts up. and But what it does one point of damage, but one thing that you do do is when you jam it in, you block this thing as it starts going. So for a round, or maybe two rounds, actually, I will, I will do a roll to make see how many rounds this thing. Okay, so for two rounds, it will not be able to use this mouth because it immediately just starts and just destroying this coffee cup. And you see it begin to disappear. Um, (laughs) And so Wendy gets just, everybody out! Now, now, now! Go, go! (laughs) Go! Everybody in! (laughs) Put it down, Doc! Put it down! (laughs) Yeah. Um... Dick, it's your turn. Oh, shit. I, I don't know what to do. You see that uh, the Doc is struggling with this thing that is kind of being distracted by when, Wendy at the moment. I mean, like, is, is, is the majority of it, like, on him sort of thing, or is there, like, a... It hasn't wrapped it around that's... him. When it when it attacked Zam, it was climbing around and almost wrapping around him. The Doc pulled it off, so he is, like, he's just, like, a picked up a giant centipede, and it's wriggling. So it's not wrapped around him. Now, I will see another thing about Mothership, that is to bear in mind with, it, with encounters and stuff. It's not just a case of, I have this weapon, I'll use this. Like when things attack you, you can you can also think about where you are. Like in terms of your AC, you can like get behind cover. You can use tools, anything. If you if if you if you describe something in that scenario that you think I'm going to do this to this thing, then we can make it happen. If it's there, then you might be able to use it. So it's not just about who has a gun, you know. Is it? I mean, I have got a gun. Is it stunned <laughs> at all? It is not stunned. Or is it? It's still. Yeah, it's, it's still moving and it's currently crunching down. Like you can just see it. You've seen um, with the trash compactor that you have on the ship. You've seen metal just get absolutely munched on by something metallic, and it's it's like that. It's not. It's not. These aren't human teeth. This is shards. This is shrapnel that is chewing on this thing. Right? Can I? Can I try and put my foam gun in its mouth? <laughs> well, I would say at this point, there's currently a coffee cup blocking its mouth. Because it's okay, going to take two yeah. rounds for that coffee cup to disappear. <laughs> See, if, I can't hold my action or anything like that. I don't think so, not on this one. But I will look it up for next session. Um, The dock is struggling with it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't because it, it just feels like if I if I try and tackle it, it's just going to be like passing a hot potato. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got it now. Yeah, you take. <laughs> I've, I've, and also, I've do for... not do not forget that this whole thing is happening in zero gravity. Oh, just God, bear that in mind. All right, I'll try and I'll try and help Doc and like grab the back end of it. Okay. Um, 
And the back end where you see now, this is like a there's part of like a ship. It's 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 strange. There's a bit of metal on the back of it that doesn't belong, and it's almost like a shard that's stuck at the back. This is a thing that tried to pierce Zam. Um, are you going to try and? It's almost yep. like a, a scorpion sting in, in in some sort of way. The back of this thing. Are you going to try yeah, and wrap get... your hands around there? I'm going to get my other hand cut off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Make a strength check. I would say with advantage as the doc is struggling with it. Because this thing's trying oh, to do so things. I get, I, get, I get a re-roll on that. Yeah. Thank God. Because that was 65. Uh, eight. 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 Then eight. You, you, you watch out for this thing. As this blade, for want of a better term, is like swishing around the zero gravity, you pick your moment and you grab hold at the point where you can actually you don't grab hold of the blade so therefore you keep all your fingers um, but you have the back of this thing what do you I've got do? It, Doc. I've got it. What, what do you do? now I don't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> what you, do I do now? I don't know you, you could I mean I will say this just give the players oh. I'm, like I say I'm a, I'm a generous warden um you could swing this thing because you were right there so you didn't take any movement to get there so you have another I would say because you grabbed hold of this thing you could move it you could how it, far it's thrashing about can I run with it you want to you want to drag it out of the room a little bit I will let you drag it out of the room yeah yeah okay how far can I get to it because I, I want to take like the big open like gaping hole in the ship and try and throw it. Nice. I would say um just gonna have a look at the the map. I would say you could get halfway there. With this thing thrashing, you could possibly get halfway there. So you're heading for the entrance that you all uh, arrived on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So with the with the mag boots, ka chung, just ka chung as you're dragging this thing <laughs> behind you. And you can see the, as the rest of you Doc, you see it as it as it passes there's even more of this sludge just goes <laughs> And these sort of just let go. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, the, that. and these—that's a free action. As you see, these tendrils. Go, and when do you see like the, the even more of the coffee cup is as as Dick disappears out of the room and he's taking this thing out of the room. Zam, it is your turn. So is this thing still connected to all the wires that are no, going? No, it it completely it came out. The the came tail out, the tail bit there. was the last yeah. bit that came out. Okay. Mm. It was sort of hidden amongst everything that was. Okay. I wonder what I can do to help Dick. Grab that power cell. Yeah. Well, it's not going to be really I mean, I don't that power that cell, though, is it? Like, because you haven't thrown it yet, have you? No, he's dragging it. No. Yeah. Right. I will hurl it on my next turn. Hopefully. Do you want to grab that parasol? What do you intend to do with it? I, I love, it. I love this game. Right. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. So I've got... I mean, one thing we could do is I could take the parasol, run to to Dick, and put the parasol... If it's munching its way through the cup, Maybe put the power cell in there. So that when we hurl so, it, it'll eat the power cell and then explode. Okay. Um, I will say, because of the nature of this... It's a, Are you going to make me roll? No, I'm not going to make you roll because it is an, <laughs> it is an old... I love that idea as well. Um, <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. Um, because of the old casing and stuff. And you know yeah. Paracels because you were the one that had to fix the ones mm -hmm. in the ship before. And I'd already started disconnecting it. Yeah, he started you know? disconnecting it. I imagine when... Zam, Zam sees that and he just kicks the last bit out and yeah. pulls the, the cell out. And you you can catch up with, with Dick, I would say. I, I would say you're catching up with Dick. You have not given yeah. the power cell to this thing. So your right. action was kind of to pull the power cell out mm -hmm. and you've caught up with Dick. So Dick has the, mm -hmm. the creature and you have the power cell. You're sort of mm -hmm. side by side yeah. walking out. Okay? Yeah. I'll tell him the plan, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm going to shove this down its throat and then you throw it. Okay, be quick about it. Um, it's not making any kind of screeching noise that you would hear. I don't know what you would hear through, through the helmets or whatever. Um, okay, another round. Everyone make a speed check. Can I add my zero G? Yes, you can add your zero G to this, um, I would say. Get in. 16. 16. All right. Brilliant. Okay, so Zam got 16. Wendy, what did you get? Three. (laughs) Oh, Wendy got three. Dick, what did you get? 51. Fail. Okay. And Doc? 89, so yeah, fail. Okay, okay. Okay. 89. Okay, so Wendy goes first as you see the other two disappear. And you can, you can hear you can hear the plan over the over your monitor, so you know what um, they're planning to do. Captain <laughs> <laughs> It takes a moment. Wendy, uh, so, sorry, honey. I was. Um, is everything okay over there? Everything, everything is is fine. Um, just something may come out of this satellite very shortly. Just avoid it. Okay. Oh. Okay. Is what is, it more, is it more, more? Keep away. Keep away. Oh Jesus! And he, there she cuts off. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then. They've kind of got this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll go and just be ready to give an extra okay. shove yeah. if they need it. Yeah. So, after communicating with the captain, Wendy heads out, so you're with them as well as this thing is writhing around and. Dick, Dick's in the lead. It's like, it's like um, Dick, it's almost like you're carrying like a fucking sleeping bag filled with a fucking wolverine. Do you know what I mean? If you sort yeah. of zipped like a vicious animal in a sleeping bag, that's what's fucking happening right now. Um, but it is Zam's turn. Yeah. So I'm going to feed it the power cell. So I'm going to put the power cell inside the mug. Okay. Inside the coffee mug. So that it's it a big start. power... I will say, uh, maybe I should state this. Okay. The power cell is a big... It's almost like a... Like a petrol tanker. So, not a tanker. Um, that'd be massive. You wouldn't be able to carry that. <laughs> like, a, like a jerry can. Yeah, jerry can. It's that kind okay. of thing. But I will say, you can see, as this thing is almost... It's on its back, and as it's chewing mm. on the cup. There are the, the sort of legs things going... Just trying to get purchased, but it's on its back, so it's like... I can kind of put it in between the legs so that it'll grab hold of it and then start feeding yeah, on that. Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you place this thing down and the legs immediately, they start grabbing yeah. hold of it and it's like and you notice as like with the strange metallic or, you know, you even see it at this point seeing that close, is that bone? Is that, mm. what the fuck's going on? I will say you can do that, make a sanity save. Okay. Because you're seeing this thing up close now. So, yeah, so just roll sanity, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Is it yeah, sanity save, yeah. Oh I'm good. Oh come on. Eighty nine. <laughs> oh you did it then. We're sending yeah, you dice. Yeah, t- totally. Totally did it. Um, yeah, it's fine. Everything's everything's gravy. Get game one uh stress? Yeah. That puts me up to nine. And am I going to have to do a a roll as well? Yeah, I think I'm going to get yeah. you to make a seeing this okay. thing. Yeah, seeing this thing up close again. Make a panic check. Oh, ho, ho, natural twenty! <laughs> <laughs> you are resolute seeing this thing. Yeah. So I think I'm. You like what take I'm that do then? Yeah. Go on. Put some flavor. Get my get my foot on it. So I switch the mag boot off. So I've got one mag boot on, one mag boot switched off. Going to get my foot on it so that when Dick tries to hurl it, I'm going to give it a shot with my foot as well. Nice. Nice. Okay. It is the creature's turn. 
but what is it going to do? Because just eat the mug. Because I've got to think about. It. You have very cleverly neutralised both its mouth and its tail. It is going to try and it is going to make a strength check to see if it can escape. It grabbed hold of that. The power cell. Mm. It's going to make a strength save to make. Oh, that was a d20 that I rolled in there. So I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep with my... Oh, that was, that was even worse. I rolled a 79. So it fails. It's still... But as you see, is, is it struggling? It, you, you see Zam, like, as, like, these weird... Um, legs, they're starting to it won't be long before they almost pierce that power cell as they're starting to mm. they're tensing up and you can see it go um, you're going to have to get rid of this thing dick <laughs> and it's dick's I'm turn my way. I, I drag it as fast as I can to the yeah and you're t- <laughs> cold. Yeah, you can so your movement is to drag it to the edge and you're going to try and swing that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like how you, um, you know, when you, you, yeah. you should have throw one advantage of your friends, if, you? if me and Wendy are going to help him. I think, you know. Yeah, can I get that? Yeah. I would say, yeah, because you did say you were going to help. Yes, I'll give yeah. you a strength check with advantage because Zam's giving it a kick and Wendy's giving it a push and you're just using that forward momentum to try and... Okay, guys, I'm three! One, One, two, three. <laughs> that was a fifty-two. <laughs> three. Eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> As you know, <coughs> it looks extra cool because we're in zero G. It is in slow motion. <laughs> As he swings this thing, as it's <laughs> and Dick launches it outside, and this thing begins. You, you see it. It has nothing to grab hold of. It's it's almost concentrating too much on the power cells. Wendy, you see the cup <laughs> disappear down his throat as the mouth starts to go. <laughs> as it begins to float away. And uh, Doc, you've still got a turn. What is Doc going to do? I walk over and go, Did anyone say smile, you son of a bitch? Or... <laughs> Well, well, he said one, two, go three. Finger, finger gun and just say, give that man a hand. <laughs> and it takes As a it explodes. And it does disappear. It, it takes a little while longer. So you say that, give that man a hand. It just all stop. <laughs> like the end of a 70s uh, cop show or something. As this thing slowly floats off into the distance. And nothing's happening. Rayan salvage. Bang! <laughs> 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 Sorry to anyone watching. I may have just uh, scared a lot of people. Um, <laughs> as it then <laughs> it explodes in space. The power cell gone. But the creature and what is left of it. Most of it has been evaporated as you see small segments floating off into the distance, joining the rest of the debris floating through space. And all is quiet for a moment until you hear a voice. What the fuck was that? And that's where we're going to end (laughs) this week's session. listening to Safe Space, a tabletop role-playing podcast featuring the Mothership game system by Tuesday Night Games. Playing the game were Jim Bamfield as Zam Brazel, Lizzie Boyle as Wendy, Gavin Mitchell as Dick Sloan, PJ Montgomery as Dr. Bill Forrest, and Vince Hunt as the Game Warden. Podcast produced and edited by Vince Hunt. In-game music composed by Tabletop Audio. Visit tabletopaudio.com to discover a world of ambient music you can use in your home games. The Safe Space theme was composed by Elliot Red. 
Find more of Elliot's work on YouTube. To find out more about the Mothership RPG system, visit mothershiprpg.com. Follow the show on social media at Safe Space RPG. And for more podcasts, visit lawbreaker.podbean.com. This has been a Lawbreaker Radio production.